I was uh, going through the library stacks and uh, suddenly I came upon a little paper bag. On an off chance, I decided to take a course in plasma physics. I was riding the car with my dad. That day, energy had come up. So the first day of class, the professor started talking about the applications of plasma physics. He says, oh yeah, that's, that's the ultimate energy source. And I was just fascinated what I, what I was reading about uh, plasmas and uh, attempts to make fusion. It looked like a good field to get into, and it has been a very good field, and continues to be. Well, you got data on the first shot, right? So that was pretty good. There we go. The uh, Plasma Science and Fusion Center is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, research centers on the MIT campus. It's an interdepartmental research center, and it's concerned with the study of uh, the physics uh, plasmas and the physics and technology of fusion. What is fusion? It's a nuclear reaction that produces energy. And basically, uh, the core of every atom is, is a nucleus. The process of fusion is basically taking two nuclei and smashing them together to the point where they fuse and become a single nucleus. In this process, an enormous amount of energy is released. It has all the advantages of uh, sort of traditionally associated with nuclear energy. On the other hand, fusion is different from conventional nuclear power in that it doesn't really have any of the problems associated with fission. You want something that's going to be available for years to come that doesn't require some sort of fuel that we are going to run out of. You want something that is not going to pollute the earth and you want something that is going to be safe. So fusion meets all of those requirements. Plasma is a fourth state of matter. Everybody knows about solids, liquids, and gases, and you know that as, as you heat a material and it gets successively hotter, it goes from solid to liquid to gas. If you heat it even further, you get a plasma. Anytime you're doing fusion, you're gonna, be, you're gonna have to be dealing with plasma. The difference between a gas and a plasma is in a plasma, the electrons have enough energy to just leave the atoms. So you end up with a soup of charged particles containing electrons, and what's left behind of the atom, which is the nucleus. What I have here is a plasma demo. So uh, I'm going to turn this on now. So the electrons are being accelerated, and they're hitting other gas molecules. When they do that, they release other electrons, they create a chain reaction, and they ionize all the gas in the tube. And that's what's causing this pink glowing plasma you're seeing here. And if I bring the magnet over here, you'll see that what it's doing right now is it's sort of sucking the plasma in. Uh, so there's this little whoopee in the plasma shape. If I turn it the other way, now it's pushing the plasma up to the top. So it's this principle that we use to control plasmas in our fusion device. Alcator CMOD is a tokamak at MIT. A tokamak is a type of nuclear fusion reactor, and it's shaped like a torus, also known as a donut. So basically, the way that it works is the magnetic fields wrap around the torus, and plasma follows these field lines. And the idea is that if you can kind of keep the plasma in one place and then heat it up hot enough, then you can get it to fuse. And the magnetic field that we use for fusion reaction, say, is typically uh, 100,000 times the magnetic field strength of the Earth. Down here is, uh, is an actual bolt, uh, and two of these bolts would hold down the space shuttle against the full thrust of all its engines. And we have 96 of these bolts on our machine, so it gives you some idea of the magnetic pressure we're creating. Fusion requires very high temperatures, in fact, much higher temperatures than you need for a plasma. So fusion requires not only plasma, but very hot plasma. In Alcator CMOD, the temperature at the center of the plasma can reach up to 50 million degrees Celsius. We heat the plasma by injecting radio frequency waves with 100 times more power than that of a typical radio station transmitter. This power is then absorbed by the charged particles in the plasma, which is what heats it to these very high temperatures. 
five, four, three, two, one. Entering hull. A shot is basically this um, flash of plasma that we create and it lasts a few seconds. Now a few seconds may not sound very long, but to a plasma, it's, it's a lifetime. We can't run for any longer than that. Um, and one of the reasons is, uh, since we're not producing any energy with our reactor, we draw an enormous amount of energy just to run it. In fact, when we turn that switch, for those two seconds, we're using as much energy as the entire city of Cambridge. It is one of the coolest toys that we have on campus here. It's nice how well the data really is. It's really good stuff. One of the really important aspects of what we do at SeatMod is the training of graduate students. Every researcher will get some days where they're the session leader. And what this basically means is it's your day, um, you call the shots very literally. So you decide exactly what plasma parameters you want and in a way that's helpful to your research. And you get to be in charge of this giant million dollar reactor for a day. We provide a world class environment for our PhD students to do their thesis research. I work on a hard x-ray diagnostic, which basically looks at high energy x-rays coming off of a small population of fast electrons. I've been spending the past four years working on a, a new um, Langmuir probe. Now, it's just a physical electrode that you stick into the edge of the plasma and look at the current it collects and you can learn things about the plasma. You can learn the temperature, the density, the potential, and fluid flows of the plasma. What we're all really trying to do is make a contribution towards an international reactor called ITER. The main difference between ITER and Alpha Tor C mod is ITER is about 10 times bigger in linear dimensions. So you can think of CMOD as a scale model of ITER. ITER will be actually the first experiment uh, which will study the regime that we call the burning plasma regime. Now a burning plasma is essentially a plasma that is keeping hot from its own fusion reactions, which is really the fundamental requirement for a plasma fusion power plant. The graduate students are deeply involved in all aspects of the work and frankly we couldn't do our work without the participation of the graduate students. For me, fusion combines the benefits of doing something that I feel is really important and having a lot of, a lot of fun at the same time. Will our dream come true indeed that we will have this big energy gain? You know, this is the uh, topic for the next 30 to 40 years, so I, I can't think of a more exciting time coming to the field than now.